Rimac Nevera is now holding the EV production car lap record around the Nürburgring Neuschleife with a lap time of 7 minutes 05. This is close to 20 or maybe even slightly more than 20 seconds faster than the previous EV lap record. To be honest, we were aiming for a sub 7 but the weather conditions were against us. You will see everything later in the video. Now. Since 2019, there is a Nürburgring lap timing commission when everything is being notarized and also scrutinized by TUV, by the engineers to make sure that's actually production spec car. All the previous claims, um, you can take them with a uh, pinch of salt, I would say, in my personal opinion. You will see later in today's BTS video how everything was done, how many struggles there were, how many emotions there were. It's been a fantastic journey. So enjoy the video. We're off to celebrate and talk to you in a bit. What's the dinner of choice for the driver the night before? It's a nice steak. Yeah. <laughs> we need some protein. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then carb overload. Carbs. Yeah, oh. and some uh, macaroni. Nice, nice. I, I, I heard that pasta is making you faster. Oh, you can take away the stone, he will eat it raw. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Enjoy. See you guys. See you. Bye. 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 What a beautiful sunset. The night before we did some recon with the team to show where they can stay for the shots. So I hope it's gonna end up a very nice video. I thought you were doing a selfie but a whole professional. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's pro. Next level. The car, you have a nice view of car coming straight all the way from here and hitting the curb, most likely. The, also another thing, what I would like to show you from drone perspective, what's nice, because you can see all the way here and after that it also opens up very nice straight towards Flugplatz. One of the photographers guys will be standing here actually, to catch the car coming over the curb with the track in the background. You got a souvenir. <laughs> We saw a crash there, right? Accident earlier. But, but the trunk completely flew open. Ah. And, and like a towel and a whole bunch of stuff. Wow. Well. Alright. Oh. Spanner? <laughs> <laughs> it just fell out of the boot. Yeah. Uh, there is. Will they lift up yeah. off here? I don't know. I, I actually have never seen them here. Because it depends on the, the arrow, on the weight and the driver's balls. But this is, this is the jump part. You have also the option to film it from the back. So I'm gonna back in. The car can already move. Fast forward to a bit later to the following day, the actual day of the record attempt. Whew, everything is coming together now. Uh, the Polestar is being rigged up as a camera car, as a chase car that I will be driving. We also have a couple of familiar faces that I have asked to come and assist us during the record run, the race tracker photographers. In 15 minutes we will go to TÜV station uh, because the car will be inspected to make sure that it's compliant, it's production spec car as it is, that it's not running false lakes, that it's not having crazy modifications that would make it questionable to qualify for a production spec lap record. So we're gonna go there and I'm gonna show you more about the car. Or maybe I should save it for after the record to make sure that nothing has been changed after the tooth inspection. So let's do that. I definitely want a shot of that uh, in the carousel. <laughs> sure. Try to get the, the, uh, the, the castle. Ah, uh, yeah. Just imagine it's there somewhere. Yeah, the problem is, as we know, if you cannot see the castle, the track will be closed. That's usually what we see here. The weather is actually not that favorable. There's a bit of moisture in the air. I spoke to the engineers. They've, they've been doing some laps this morning in industry pool. The track is greasy. So, uh, not optimal conditions, but uh, it's good. always good to have some driver excuses. Then I can shoot him from behind. And the wheel pops up. Exactly. And then when he goes around the whole carousel, I can shoot him from the uh, kind of a panning shot. It's also yeah. possible. That's all possible in one lap. Okay. Yeah, I just break up somewhere, I guess. Hello. Mr. Shimonic, Hello. nice seeing you. I heard you might become my neighbor, that you're looking at buying a house in Makarska. Yes, uh, yes. Good. How you know that? How you <laughs> know that? <laughs> 
carbs. This is the fastest banana in the world. Carbs again, huh? Carbs. Yeah, but at least natural. It's not and processed food, so it's, so it's, so it's good. Yeah. So the engineer is checking the technical specification according to actual data that is in the system of TÜV or any other government body and then checking what is actually in the car or on the car for example right now they're checking the suspension and then he's filling in the, his own data sheet that is uh, will be then compared to the accordance with the production spec sheet I hope it all makes sense what I said so did you also build the cage for the Nevera? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Amazing. It's more amazing at what time? Like How long did time it... frame was like... How long yeah. did it take you? No, oh, he, he was... Yeah, like, yeah. Seven days. Seven days. Wow, that's impressive. That's, that's cool. Serious. That's seriously impressive. So where is it bolted to? Because it's carbon fiber monocoque. How is it like... Did you glue it or... Ah, glue, okay. So this is amazing. I just want to show it to you now. Just to be sure, and unfortunately we've seen last week that things can go very wrong at the Nevercrain. Although the Rimats Nevera monocoque is the strongest monocoque in the world. It's also, I believe, the biggest single piece carbon fiber item in the world. Uh, the drivers and everyone else, just to be safe, installed a roll cage. Now, and it, because of that, because it's such a, I would say, NASCAR spec roll cage, the doors had to be emptied. But worry not, what weight that was taken out here is added in roll cage. Roll cage weighs 43 kilos. On top, in the rear, I'm gonna show it to you in a bit, it still has full equipment, full measuring equipment to run industry pool, which weighs additional 40 kilos. The grab a carbon fiber monocoque from a crash test car, measured it, and in seven days, they welded the cage and then glued it to the monocoque. So designed and hand built by... I want to show you a very special mod, aside from the roll cage. As head of powertrain, uh, is banana suitable fuel for human powertrain? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like experiments where they produce electricity out of potatoes. Yeah, maybe we do something with bananas. So yeah. We do bananas car. Yeah, oh. Is that why Mario Kart has bananas? Probably. <laughs> we should ask, ask Luigi. <laughs> what I really love, by the way, about this place, look at that, we have a secret prototype workshop, lots of cool cars, even more secret stuff, but we're in the middle of village, somewhere nearby. So here you have a, a hypercar car about to do a lap record and further down there's a guy just shoveling his yard, making sure that everything is looking nice. That's fantastic. That's just never green things for you. See you at the track. Taxi, taxi service. Okay, the driver, Martin, is going to the track. The car is rigged up. We'll be leaving to the track. We need to go back to Apex, pick up Polestar and go to the track ourselves. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Four years in the making for me ever since I joined the company back in 2019. Not part of it anymore, officially, unofficially, officially, yeah. Uh, but even back then, I was always like, Mata, 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 engineering team, engineering team, we should do a lap record, we should do a lap record, never can, never can. And here we are, here we are. Excited, very excited. We arrived at T13, that's by the way, the notary walking there to make sure that the record is verified. He is going to compare the official lap timing together with the two stopwatches in his hand to make sure that the system is uh, pretty much correct. The team is also already here with tire warmers. Um, I'm not sure if I should explain it to you, but tire warmers are obviously used to make sure that tires are immediately up to temperature and the car can go out on immediate spec because we have limited time, we cannot waste time of going left and right, warming up the tires to do a warm-up lap and then go out. Everyone does it, but uh, sometimes I see the argument coming by on the, on the internet or whatever, like, oh, the car was using tire warmers, how is that production spec? It's just to save time, simple as that. So usually, uh, if he has his passport ready... Mm -hmm. Do you happen to have a passport on you? Goes to such a deep length that notary is even verifying the driver and his passport ID to make sure who has driven the record, when, at what time, etc. etc. The car has been delivered. Now here's a fun story behind it, why the car is being delivered by a closed truck. Because yesterday during industry pool the car got pulled over by the police 
and the police officer said if we're gonna see you tomorrow again on the road with seats with ears and wearing a hunt system with a stud eagle we're going to confiscate the car I'm not going to say anything that might uh, yeah bring me in trouble in the future but you can make your judgment yourself especially since all the other manufacturers are doing exactly the same thing but anyway the car is here and we're ready to uh, rock and roll let's see what the time is going to be I have no idea of course everyone is looking for a low seven maybe even below seven but the time will tell the time will tell ha fun the tires are going on Tears in my eyes. <laughs> oh, coming. Even four stop watches. And? Seven oh seven. Seven oh seven. Yeah. Massive problems with the, uh, with the tires. 7.07, too hot currently for the tires. The notary is checking the car if everything is still up to spec. The car will be loaded up and go to a charger and notary and the two people will go with them to make sure that the car will remain in the same condition. I just hope that we get something faster but it's just way too hot at this point. First sector good and then it's just melted away. Let's see. Let's go again. Yeah, fortunately enough, the last couple of weeks has been here very cloudy and rainy, so the ambient temperatures were significantly lower to do any testing. And now it's 30 or something degrees. Probably track temps above go well, close to 40. I need to double check. Yeah, let's go for a second attempt. To be honest, with today's temperatures, sub seven, which is of course the magic number. I don't think it's gonna happen. We could maybe, hopefully, if we're lucky, gonna be for sub seven for the, the old layout, the 20.6 kilometer, the sport auto layout. But yeah, of course we want to do the whole thing. But yeah, the, the weather is not on our side. Usually uh, the, the rain is the issue today, the temperature is the issue, like it has been also many times for other manufacturers. But with such a high power car, the temperatures, yeah. Like I'm so trying to be so smooth with it. Just mm -hmm. not to overload. Yeah. yeah. Here I risk a lot. Like there's just everything. I was just like let's try and make time up. Because I wasn't sure what time we were doing and stuff we were just... I'll try and manage it and then see how it's could I also manage it? I'll buy you a big chicken tonight yeah, if you manage it. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting drunk because we're happy or because we're sad? Of course yes. we're happy. Good. <laughs> yes. 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 The right answer. <laughs> have the fastest production electric car on the rink. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! And we also, we also learn what it means to have high expectations. <laughs> Well, that's it. As promised, the specs of the car, it's still on top 2R tires, still the same factory spec brakes, uh, the interior still having 43 kilos inside of cage, and the seats, both seats, airbags, everything is in it, and uh, yeah, also the measuring equipment from the industry pool uh, was still there. As you can see, actually insert clip here that a fellow named Tom sent to me on Instagram. The car is leaving 
like massive tire marks. So as mentioned, it's simply too hot, the tires were melting away. So long story short, in ideal conditions with lower temperatures, um, I'm confident that the car could have been sub-7, to be honest, the guys already uh, combined all the best sectors that they've done in TF, the car already did sub-7, who knows? Maybe it's a good opportunity to do limited edition for the future, to do uh, and come back and do actual sub-7, or maybe Bugatti Rimats model, or the next Bugatti. I hope you guys enjoyed this BTS video, massive thank you to the Rimats team for allowing me to shoot all these BTS behind the scenes and sharing it with you. Uh, thank you the whole team for amazing vibes amazing opportunity the first OEM that I'm allowed to cover and it's been amazing Thank you race track photographers for helping us cover the the track as well and everyone else and I guess I'm gonna go celebrate now. I just totally realized I forgot to introduce the driver Start, start the camera. I'm gonna do a voiceover <laughs> Yes Yes, <laughs> Martin Sveden Kreuz Kajto, ja to na simulatoru 240 Tu je Bog 205 maksimalno, ali evo, gume nisu zdržale Ja sam im rekel da u drugom mjesecu moramo vozit Nisu me slušali i evo, aga vrak 705, ne? Martin, you need to sign There it is also the, the pen is against us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> also the pen. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who is holding this? <laughs>